things you find on eBay that make you go, hmm, I'm not sure the intended application of this stuff is LED tape, but it's mains voltage LED tape. This stuff is designed, well, the listing says, 5 meter LED strip light, AC 220 to 230 volt, 2835, 120 LEDs meter, kitchen under cabinet stair light. It then goes on to say, uh, not waterproof, but suitable for bathroom, bedroom, dining room, garage, hallway, basically every room, including playroom, uh, department, baby, boys, children's, girls, teens, unisex, adult. Um, and then for occasions, it says baby shower, baby shower of sparks and bar mitzvah, bang mitzvah, more like it, given this stuff. Uh, and just basically they're just saying it can be used everywhere. Absolutely. That's unfortunate because it is just bare tape with the 240 volt or, well, the 220 to 230 volt running all the way along it. And you can cut it every four inches, 100 millimeters uh, and just hook the mains directly onto this. So let's take a look at some of the pictures because they kind of uh, indicate the levels of safety that were in the minds of the people selling this. So let's zoom down onto the images here and then we'll test it. So a bit disappointed because I ordered what I thought I was going to get this same one they're showing here. In reality, there is a bridge rectifier, rectifier at one end, and at the other end of theirs is a linear current regulator with a programming resistor, but I did not get that. Mine has uh, just three resistors. It's got a bridge rectifier in each section, and then three resistors. So they've just capped the current at a sort of level that's going to be dependent on the voltage. And these will be sort of high voltage LEDs dropping a fair amount. Most of the mains will be dropped across the LEDs with the rest across the resistors, but the resistors are quite high value. Not sure how hot they're going to get. From an electrical safety perspective, uh, they've got this, I just want one of these actually, this. Uh, it's looking a bit dark in the picture, but if you know the hoppy tester I've got, which I'll be using in a moment to hook this up, it's basically a speaker connector and a little on-off switch and a flex screen, and it looks almost 3D printed. That's very tempting to 3D print one of those. I may already have ordered a speaker connector, but they've just stuffed the wires in. It's kind of fitting because this appears to have speaker wire on one end of it. But then again, it, they show how versatile this stuff is because literally they show that you can take it and you can just stuff the wires into a socket if you want some light. And that's how they've tested it. They just stuck it down into the socket to make it light up. Excellent. That sets the standard. So tell you what, let's cut a section of this off. I shall bring a pair of scissors in and chop it. And I'll give you a close up of this afterwards so you can see the construction. It's worth mentioning. On the back of it uh, is the usual double-sided tape. But really, once you've stuck it on, if you stuck it onto a metal surface for cooling, it's got two bus bars running along the back of this, live and neutral, uh, with just the solder resist and then that sort of sticky tape between that and any metal surface. So not particularly great. But I tell you what, let's get my speaker wire here, bear it back, and bring up the hoppy with its speaker terminals And we'll see if this just goes bang or whatever. So I'm going to stuff this in here. I do like their tester. I do have to possibly make myself one of those. Right, I'll just zoom back out again here. Bring the hop in, put this down. I'm going to actually just stick it down to the table, I think. Hold on, just going to stick it down so it stays down because I want to probe it with a meter. Whether this is a good idea, I do not know. That is not coming off right, that is uh, the double-sided tape. It's, uh, there's the layer I want to come off. Is it coming off? This is, this is where it's all going to start going wrong for a start. Uh, where's my snips that I usually, usually use when I can't get fingernails under this? Oh, right, I tell you, I'll try it from the other end. Yeah, it's, it's all gone horribly wrong. If I had fingernails, it would be easier, yes, but I bite them off and trim them and I just make sure they're short. I do not like long nails. This is uh, just getting irritating now, isn't it? I may just stick it down with other tape because this backing tape is just not wanting to come off, is it? Yeah, one moment, please. And continue. I've managed to get it off. That is very good double-sided tape because the 
backing tape doesn't come off it. That's going to make it very hard for the kitchen fitters to stick it under kitchen cabinets. Perfect. Let's have live connections under kitchen cabinets. You can always run your fingers along it when you're wanting excitement. Or just maybe you could, if you wanted to run the kettle, you could just tap a flex off it and bring it down. Right. Let us plug this in. Oh, is this a good idea? I'm just going to check the rating on this. Does it say? It'll be fine. Yeah, it says 220 is the right stuff. Okay. So the current is 12 milliamps. So about 6 milliamps per section. 2.8 watts. How hot are those little resistors going to get? This is where I'm going to probe on with my meter. And I am going to short something out, haven't I? It's just guaranteed something terrible is going to happen. Uh, so let's set this to 20 volts, maybe, across the resistors, and we'll work out what the power dissipation of those resistors is. Uh, it's 18 volts across each resistor. And they're quite high-value resistors. Let me just do some maths. One moment, please. Kink calculator in position. Let's compute. So there was 18 volts dropped across those resistors, 18 volts divided by the value of the resistor, 3,900 ohms. How does that tally up with the current I was measuring about 6 milliamps? It's showing about 4.6 milliamps. To actually, this, because we're dealing with a full wave rectified but unsmoothed uh, voltage because these bridge rectifiers on the tape, it's actually a bit trickier to measure things accurately uh, compared to DC where you get a nice solid value. So let's go with the 6 milliamps that it showed there. Uh, the 6 milliamps times, say, the 18 volts dropped across the resistors gives a dissipation 108 milliwatts per resistor. That's uh, less than quarter of watts, but it's about a tenth of a watt, which is absolutely fine. So these aren't being grilled. The LEDs, what's the voltage across the LEDs? I shall turn it on and I shall probe them. What's the worst could happen? I'll leave it set to the... 20 volt range, the slight shimmer you're seeing there is because this isn't smooth. I'll poke it at some point. Maybe not. Uh, let's measure the voltage, making sure I don't go too close to a rectifier because I will end up shorting something out. And then the tape will explode in flames. It's showing about 15.5 volts. It's going to be a bit higher. 15.5, um, it's going to be roughly 3 volts per LED. 15.5. Uh, Divided by the 3 volts is about 5-ish. Uh, but and, uh, these chips are usually, these multi-chip LEDs are usually a rectangular array. So I'm going to say there's going to be about 6 chips in these. It's going to be a 3 by 2 array of chips in each of these LEDs. That's interesting because uh, that means the dissipation of each package is also exactly what those resistors were. It's about a tenth of a watt, which is okay. That's not bad for these little uh, LEDs here. Not sure how hot they'll get. I shall turn the power off and I shall touch it. Stone cold. Nothing really warm there at all. I suppose you could use the thermal imaging camera. I could see how hot they get. One moment, please. Fleur says roughly about 30 degrees Celsius above ambient because it's about 10 degrees Celsius in my little workshop area here. So, um... That's not bad. The resistor's a little bit hotter, but it's not bad at all. Um, that's impressive. Zoom back down there. Focus back down onto that. So applications for this stuff. Well, I don't think I'd feel comfortable about it certainly being put where it could be touched because it is basically just live. Um, but the only applications I can think of this are where it's laid into a metal channel, hopefully a grounded metal channel, or a plastic channel maybe, given that it doesn't get too hot, um, and then covered with a suitable cover. But it still means terminating thin wires, soldering them directly. I mean, that's 240 across that. And if any humidity get in, it's going to cause flashover. It's going to cause tracking flashover in this stuff. And I'm not sure that would result in, depending on the fuse protection. Um, the other application that comes to mind is LED neon, the, where it's mounted sideways pointing into the housing and it just makes it glow along the full length. And it's the flexible neony type stuff because this would be really useful 
for just hooking 240 straight into the end. But not for outdoors. I'd rather use 12 volts outdoors. Uh, purely because, you, well, the AC's got the advantage of uh, it's less prone to DC ele electrolysis. But um, I'm going to turn this off. This is glary. This is very glary. Um, but uh, the... AC has that advantage of the of reducing the risk of electrolysis. So there is DC along it, particularly around about the rectifiers themselves. But uh, the issue with the, the AC is that it's more likely to flash over um, because any moisture in there will cause tracking between these pads and then it will actually blow up and potentially cause fires. So I'm not really sure what this is aimed at. Uh, so to finish this video, I'm going to actually take a picture of this and just show you the track layout on it. So, one moment, please. That actually took a while. The reason being that it's got that horrible white uh, soda resist on it that makes it quite hard to actually see where the tracks are. And the tracks are filling up just about all the space, including on the back. We've got two big bus bars for live and neutral on the back. So, I'll show you the schematic first so that you know... But the circuitry is like, it's not very complicated. It's the simplest ever. We have the live bus bar going right through, the neutral bus bar going right through, and they dip through a bridge rectifier. The rectifier rectifies it to DC, but unsmoothed. And then it goes through 12 of these LEDs that each contain six chips. I've now confirmed that by measuring voltage. And two 3,900 ohm resistors just to balance it to the rest of the mains voltage. Um, I measured the LEDs at 18 volts at 15 milliamps and uh, at the current it's running at, they were running at about 17 milliamps across them uh, when run on DC, this is sort of around about the 5 or 6 milliamp mark. Very simple circuitry. Not a lot to go wrong except for the track spacing OMG. Right, tell you what, I shall move this up here and then explain that these are the live and neutral pads so because this section here is one of a complete section of 100 millimeters, which is uh, about four inches, um, it effectively starts with this bit and ends with this bit. Just because that might be confusing because that bit over there is this and that bit over there is this. But here's what happens. There are the bus bars in the back, so there are lots of plated through holes where it joins on to go onto those bus bars at the back. The live just, it's the creepiest thing ever. It just skirts up here. There's really little separation and goes to the bridge rectifier. The neutral goes down onto that bus bar, but also comes back along this side. That's it coming back there and goes to the bridge rectifier as well. And that's the live and neutral on the bridge rectifier. The positive and negative come out. The positive goes straight to the LED to the left of the rectifier. Um, so effectively, you can see where the tracks have been cut here. The LED to the left is being fed first. So the positive is coming out here, going to that LED, going through the six chips in that LED, and then it ducks back down under the rectifier to the next LED. And from there, it just goes along LED, LED, resistor, LED, 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 resistor, and the same all the way along with loads and loads of track space. You know, it's really using all the copper in this just probably to help with heat dissipation, although it really it's not that much of an issue with this. It's surprisingly, uh, it seems to be running everything quite nicely, which is unusual. But it gets to the end, and then to get its negative, and this is another squirmy thing, this purple track here is the negative, the continuation from this uh, bridge rectifier's negative. It comes along, does a very sharp turn and squishes in between the live pad and the uh, other end of that LED and then goes on to the end of the LED and that is it. Um, really not much else to say. It's a string of LEDs and resistors and a bridge rectifier, but it's every single 10 centimetres, 4 inches, and so you can cut it. Quite interesting. Definitely not something you want to stick under fridge cabinets, though. Uh, kitchen cabinets. It will happen. And they'll maybe put a bit of maybe insulation tape over and just say, don't touch it. I'm not really sure what's going to happen. Anyway, there is something we should try. We should test it for electrical integrity along full length by plugging the whole lot in at once, noting this is all going to be live. So I'm going to have to be careful here. I shall zoom back out. I shall bring up the hobby. Either this will go bang if there's a poor electrical integrity. I keep promising things are going to go bang. Nothing ever goes bang. 
or we'll get a nice reading which will give us an indication of the... This is not ideal. This is not ideal. It will give us an indication of the... a more accurate indication, because this is a supposedly a five metre length, which means that there should be approximately 50 sections long. I've already cut two off. They're here. So it will be four to eight, right? Let's see if this makes a connection. The whole lot lights up. Making sure there's nothing likely to short circuit. It's all lit up. What is the reading I'm getting? Uh, 68 watts, 300 milliamps on the button. Power factor is astounding at 0.926, but that's because of the way these are working. They are riding the sine wave to a degree. Okay, so uh, it's creeping up a bit, 70 watts. Let's say 300. It's up to 310 milliamps. Okay. I won't leave it too long because this is going to get hot. That's 71 watts along that. So 310 milliamps. That's uh, 0.310 amps uh, divided by the 48 sections that are three, theoretically on that gives the 6 milliamps or so that it's drawing. That's reasonably accurate then. Um, so that's quite interesting. Uh, and 6 milliamps, uh, hold on, let's work out the power dissipation per section of that strip. It's 240 volts, say, times 0 0.006 equals, the power dissipation is 1.4 watts along here, which isn't too bad, actually. That's okay. So uh, let me know what you think this could be used in. It is kind of spicy. It's dangerous. Another seller was selling it with sleeve that you could slide it into. Um, but I'm not sure if this is actually aimed at something else. I'm not sure if it's designed for a, a, for a specific product. Like, as I say, the side glow neon stuff that, uh, hold on, got a bit here, where the tape is mounted in the side and the light comes out the end after bouncing about. Because that would make sense. It meant, means you could cut it every uh, the 100 millimeter, four inch. Uh, although the lower voltage stuff is better for that because uh, you can cut it every um, inch, 25 millimeters. But it is interesting stuff nonetheless. Now I'm tempted, I don't really need to do this, tempted to buy all the blue stuff just to take a closer look at the LED. But I know what's going to be in it. A little, basically a little rectangular chip with uh, with six sections because I have measured the voltage across that. But interesting stuff. Let me know what you think about this. Do you think people are going to put it in dangerous places? And uh, do you think it's likely with the proximity of the connections, particularly the bus bars in the back, and people sticking it onto surfaces that could get humid and mucky and uh, metal surfaces, is it going to blow up? That is the question.